get at Scott here. Uh, I thought I'd show you today how to change the front brake pads on your W204 uh, C-Class. Uh, I'll also show you how to remove the sliding caliber pins uh, if you need to lubricate them and also how to measure the disc rotor thickness just using one of those $20 um, electronic vernier gauges. Okay, I've jacked up the front of the car and have got an axle stand under there. So number one priority is your personal safety, so make sure you've got uh, a correctly rated axle stand and it's secure and there's no chance the vehicle can topple while you've got your head under there. Okay, next thing to do is to turn the steering wheel so that um, you've got the caliper coming out as far as you can get it because it makes it easier to get to the bolts you need to undo. So these calipers on the Mercedes W204 are sliding calipers, which is what the vast majority of cars have these days. It's only the really high performance cars, like maybe the AMGs, have um, what's called uh, opposed piston calipers, where there's pistons on both sides, but these calipers are called sliding calipers because they only have a piston on one side, and that's generally on the inside, just here. And then the other side is fixed and what happens is the forces are transferred through two sliding pins so the caliper can actually slide uh, to reposition itself and transfer the forces from one side to the other and even them out. So I feel that explains what it's all about. So to remove the pads there's only a, a few things you need to do. The first thing is we've got to take this clip off. And then just to show you the difference, these are the brakes on the front of my racing motorcycle. Now these are high performance brakes, these are opposed piston calipers. So in this case the calipers are actually fixed, so they don't move at all. But there are two pistons on either side, so there's two there and there's two on the back. So when you squeeze the brake lever, the fluid's actually pushing four pistons against the discs two on the inside, two on the outside. Now they're a much better type of brake caliper than the you know, run of the mill garden variety that you have on so cars. You can see the, the two pistons pushing against the pad on the outside. Yeah, there you can see the two pistons pushing against the pad on the inside. You undo the bolts for the, the pins. So there's one here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. And then there's one down the bottom there. So the caliper slides on pins in here actually. And there's one down the bottom. So first thing is we'll take those two. We'll take the clip off and then we'll take the two uh, bolts out of the sliding pins. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bolt out that secures the sliding pin. So the pin is underneath those rubber boots there and the bolt goes through the centre of the pin into the holding bracket here. So it's a 13 millimetre. So there's, there's the bolt that holds the pin. And then I'm going to loosen the bottom one. There's the bottom one there, so I'm going to uh, now tackle that bolt there. So I won't show it to you on film while I'm undoing it, but uh, it's easy to find. It's exactly the same as the top one. Okay, so now I'm tackling the bottom bolt. So I'm loosening that off. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that bolt there which is the Torx bit. Uh, just undo that to release the bracket here holding the brake pad wear sensor.
So you just want to release that, get that out of the way. And then, then you can actually pull the wear sensor out of the little slot that it sits in in the brake pad. There. So that's out, that's now out of the way. There's the uh, wear sensor there. So there's a little slot in the top of it. Okay, so just to summarise, what I've done so far is I've taken the top bolt out of the sliding pin and you can actually see the pin, you know, I can pull it in and out like that. So I've taken the bolt out of that one completely, I've removed the wear sensor and I've loosened, only loosened the bolt on the bottom there, I haven't taken it out yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this clip. Now, you've got to be careful with this because of it's a very strong clip and it can come flying across the room. You don't want it to hit, and hit you in the eye, so make sure you wear safety glasses. But what I do is I put a screwdriver in there and I'll hold it with the needle nose pliers, just hold it so it doesn't go flying off. And I can just lever it like that. Just to get one side off, okay. So now I've got one side off. It'll just, it'll just come out very easily. So you'll get the hang of it. It's just a bit fiddly at first. So you can see this um, tag here. That actually slots into this hole here. That's what, that's what holds it all into place. So now that I've got the clip off, this caliper can. You know, move quite freely. Um, the other thing I need to do is I need to push the piston back in a little bit because you get a wear ridge. You get a wear ridge on the disc there. So the pads are actually, um, I, I guess, uh, restricted by this lip on the edge of the disc. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm levering against the disc and the outside brake pad. I just put a bit of pressure on there and what it does is it actually pulls the caliper over so it's compressing the piston. There, now you can see how it's loosened up. So now if I take the bottom bolt out, um, it, should, it should come off. So there's the, the bolt from the bottom sliding pin. And there you go. That's how easy it is to get the caliper off. So I've rested the caliper on top of the disc there. And this gives you a bit of an idea of uh, how it's all made up. So there's that's where the bolt goes for the bottom sliding pin and that's where the bolt goes for the top sliding pin and all this is fixed this is the caliper bracket okay so I've just supported the caliper on top of a bucket here just to take the weight off the hydraulic hose now to remove the pads it's very simple the outside pad is just sits just sits there against the uh, the fixed side of the caliper, so it just you just pull it off. I've actually got a bit of anti-squeal uh, material on here, so it's it's actually sort of stuck on. It's like a elastic, so I'm not going to take it off. But you just you just lift it off, and then the inside pad has some clips on the back of it, um, which hold it inside the piston. The piston is piston is hollow so I put my finger in there so that um, that clip goes on there like that there's two there's two little posts here two little dowels and this clip actually sits on there like that that's, that's it so that's how that goes so when you put it back in again when you put the new pad back in you just push it 
into the piston and these clips hold it in place, those spring clips. Now, if you're putting brand new pads in, they'll be thicker than the old pads. So what you have to do is get a G-clamp and uh, push that in, push that piston in. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so if you're putting brand new pads in, they'll be much thicker, so you need to pull the piston back into the body here. So you just use a G-clamp like that, and I'll put the G-clamp on here and I can start winding that in like that. And I can feel that that's pulling it in. So that's all you do. So I've actually pulled that in now. Now, here's the the sliding pin. See how that slides in and out? Here's the sliding pin here. So that's quite moving quite freely. Very important to keep those lubricated so that they slide well because you've got to transfer the force from here over to there so if these things are seized up and they're not sliding properly what happens is you wear out the inside pad much quicker than the outside pad and also the disc you know because you're not getting the whole you're not getting the balancing of forces so it's very important to keep these moving freely I did lubricate these not long ago So they're fine, I'm not going to re-lubricate them this time. So that's how you take them out. If you want to lubricate the pins, all you do is just pull back the rubber boot out of the slot there so that you free one end and then on the other end here you want to, you want to get the rubber boot off onto the outside. I'll just use a little screwdriver like that. So there you go. And take that out. And that's what your sliding pin looks like. And I might as well throw a bit of extra lubricant on here while I've got it out. This is uh, a proper caliper pin grease. So that's the first, that's it. So it's not difficult, so there you go. Again. So I've put the clip back onto the pad and there's a, uh, there's a little circlip arrangement here that holds it in place. And I've already pushed the piston back, so you just get those clips inside the piston. There. Okay, so that's clipped into place. That's in place. So now we just pick it up and push it back over the disc. And it should slide on well because you've already pushed the piston in. And you just got to slide the pins back. There. So that's, that's in the right spot. And here's the bolts. Stick. Get the first one started. Okay, so that's, that's going in. And get the bottom one in. Yep, so that's started as well. So I'll just, I'll just 
stir these up. I won't do them up tight, but I'll just stir them up a bit. You can see the, uh, the little U-shaped slot on the inner pad. Very simple. So this, the, the little post there, goes into the hole in the pad. So there's the U-shaped slot and there's a hole in the pad material just there at the end of the screwdriver. So that hole, that... Uh, post on there goes into the hole in the pad. That makes sense. So it's got to go like goes like this. Gosh. Like that. Okay. And then that bolts back onto there. Okay, so that's all done. Just make sure that's not touching the the rotor. Right, here's the tricky bit. It shouldn't be, but it is. So we've got to get this clip back onto here. So that this clip actually provides a pull this way. So it goes like that. The way I've done it before is I put one side on and I get the little tag in the hole there and I grab this end with the needle nose pliers and I keep my thumb on there then I twist it up like that okay so that's it that wasn't too hard at all now I just have to tighten up those two uh, caliper pin bolts. There's the, there's the bottom one, so that's it. That's finished. I don't think that's, I don't think that's too hard at all. Just take your time, and you can change your own brake pads. I'll just show you another little trick while I'm here. I think while you've got the wheel off and you're mucking around with the brakes, it's a good idea to measure the disc thickness. Okay, this, this is a nifty way of measuring your disc thickness if you don't have a, a brake rotor. Uh, thickness measurer. Um, these vernier calipers, you can buy them online for about $20. They're accurate to a hundredth of a millimetre. Um, and unfortunately with a vernier you can't normally measure the thickness once they're worn a bit because of the ridge on the outside here. So I can't close that onto the surface properly. So what do I do? I just get a couple of decent sized washers, measure the washers first, that's 4.08 millimetres, record that, and put the washer on the face, on each face, and then measure the thickness between the two washers, and I get 
two, three. So I subtract one from the other and my disc rotor thickness is 31.15 millimetres. So I've still got 1.15 millimetres to go because these are, these are the larger rotors, the 322s and the new thickness is 32 millimetres and you're allowed to go down to 30 millimetres. So I'm almost halfway through them at 51,000 kilometres. So um, you can do a calculation and work out the wear per millimetre. So it tells me I've got about 50,000 to go. So I hope that uh, little trick helps you out. It's a lot better than buying one of those fancy uh, rotor thickness verniers. So that's all done now. So now you know how to change your front brake pads. So I just have to put the wheel back on and uh, take it off the jack and she's all finished. And I'll just show you this. Here's the inside of my wheel rim. Um, it's just about spotless. And that's because of these low dust ceramic Acabono pads. They haven't been cleaned for months. So, heaps better than having black wheels. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.